There are many facets of reality that want to influence us as human beings because it's an energetic game. It's energetic warfare, spiritual warfare. And so we've created more war on this planet. This war thing just keeps happening over and over. We need to hold ourselves accountable and just stay plugged fiercely and ferociously into that love frequency. So balancing love and freedom in a world with so much trickery and temptation and manipulation is the code that we are all trying to crack. We all originated from that original geometrical source codex. And so in all of us, there is that direct connection through our God spark, through that divine spark that's inside every cell in our body that little diamond flame that lights us up, that God intelligence is in all of us, that love is always there. There's also another element because we, we live in this dualistic universe and when you're connected to pure source, there is just love. This freedom thing, freedom is our birthright, but freedom in a worldly environment where there's free will, it challenges us because we're not just playing in an environment where there's only love. There is also the other side of the force. You've got many other beings influencing reality, whether you want to believe this or not, whether you want to know this or not, whether you want to sweep it under the carpet, it doesn't mean that it's going to disappear. Whether you pretend that it's not there, it doesn't mean that it's going to disappear. There are so many levels to this game and what we have to do as human beings, as multi-dimensional, super powerful human beings in this environment is get to understand, understand, understand the game. And there are many facets of reality that want to influence us as human beings because it's an energetic game. It's energetic warfare, spiritual warfare. We can take control of our own realities. We can live the lives we want, dancing around as beings full of love, being in freedom without getting tempted. But it's not easy because the temptation comes in, in many different forms. Light doesn't always mean good. Darkness doesn't always mean bad. A being created from light can still have bad intentions. But then that word bad really comes down to your perception of it. Because maybe the badness that a certain being could be creating in this world is giving you an opportunity to dance in that world of freedom without getting tempted by it. Because if there wasn't the badness and the temptation, how would you play the game? You wouldn't be able to play the game because all the puzzle pieces are needed. All the players in the game are needed to be able to create the dance. But you've got to decide, who are you going to dance with? What are you going to dance with? Maybe you want to test yourself by dancing with those low frequency forces. Maybe you want to observe, but the best of the best, they challenge themselves. They run the gauntlet. They put themselves in the firing line and dodge those bullets, or maybe let those bullets come towards them, slow them down and catch them like Neo in the Matrix. We live in a holographic reality and all possibilities are available. Every single being that is here in this reality field and within other reality fields on multiple dimensions all came from the original source code. We all came from the original geometry, but that original geometry, which made up the very first highly conscious beings, over time shifted because beings were created and out from those beings, other beings were created, which are just different forms of geometry. But the geometry got shifted. The geometry got changed. And so darkness is just a different form of geometry. It's all code. It's all mathematics. And so when you break everything down to its simplest form, you can change everything at a base level, which is a mathematical geometrical level. And from there, everything can shift. Change the micro, you change the macro or you can change the macro and change the micro. It doesn't matter which end you start from because really they're not ends. There is no start, middle or end. There's just a point in space time and those point in space times are multiple and vast and you can pick anyone. Change the mathematics there and it's like a ripple 
in a pond. The ripples go out towards the edge, but in this case there's no edge. They just ripple through the dimensional fields, changing, recalibrating, realchemizing. We, as humans, we descended from a, a species which has both dark and light inside of it. Our gene code has been played around with by a species that has had so much influence on this planet. And that species has Lyran, Syrian and Reptilian DNA. So that dark and light split is running straight through the center point. But those beings, they're part of the game too. Because the game goes way back, way back when. They're part of the story. They're part of the unfolding. And everything that is available to us was a thought at some point in the mental realm, in God's mind, in Source Intelligence's mind whatever label you want to put on it, it doesn't matter. Because before anything can manifest, it must go through that mental realm, that fourth dimensional space. So the good, the bad and the ugly was all thought about at one point before it came into fruition. Because the creator of the game wanted to create a dance that wasn't going to be boring. Remember, variety is the spice of life. Sometimes we wonder why the heck did we create so much variety? But just imagine, if there wasn't this much variety, life would be a little bit boring. Or maybe for a little while it would be great because we'd just be in love and everyone would be loving each other and dancing with each other and be happy, caring and nurturing. But at some point that's gonna get a little bit boring because naturally we forget what it was like before. Even when the pain has been so severe throughout the multiple galactic wars throughout our universe, which all of us have been a part of, some of them or a lot of them or all of them. We've experienced that trauma, but it's so deep down in our cellular memory, so deep down in our soul memory that we forget. And so we've created more war on this planet. This war thing just keeps happening over and over. And it's not cool, but it's part of this cyclical dance. But at some point, surely we've got to think or feel enough is enough. Let's just be love again. When will that happen? I don't know. Will it happen in our lifetime? I don't know, but at some point we're going to return to highly conscious playing fields when we're in fifth dimensional forms where love is the key, the question, the code, the formula, the everything, the all. And all of these crazy things that have happened on this planet fizzle into distant memories. Generation after generation they'll be talked about, bedtime stories, and eventually they won't even be talked about as bedtime story. They'll be forgotten. And it's at that point we need to hold ourselves accountable and just stay plugged fiercely and ferociously into that love frequency to make sure we stay on path. But we're talking now hundreds, thousands, maybe hundreds and thousands, maybe millions of years down the timeline. Who knows? Or maybe we're talking about in three years time when consciousness on this planet has shifted so greatly. Who really knows? Nobody really knows, but what does matter in the hearts, minds, and souls of every human being on planet Earth is right here, right now. We can choose to be self-aware. We can choose to be love. We can choose to love our sisters and brothers. We can choose to unite and be one, one frequency, one code, one consciousness, to unite and dance together, having fun, loving and laughing, enjoying living with passion on this beautiful earth. You get to choose. I get to choose. We all get to choose. So what are you going to choose? I'm choosing love. I'm choosing freedom. I'm choosing unity. I'm choosing an ascension path which sees all of our sisters and brothers rise together in unity and harmony. That's my choice. That's my vision. Maybe it aligns with yours. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Does it matter? Not really because we're all radically unique humans here on planet Earth, enjoying and playing this human game. And all roads lead to the same space, eventually. So wherever you are on this planet, beautiful soul, make a choice, decide. Where are you right now? Where do you wanna be right now? Where are you headed? Maybe where you are and where you need to be and where you're headed are all the same place. <laughs> and there's nowhere to go, maybe. But only you know that, because coming to Earth, or come into Earth School, this beautiful Ascension boot camp, to find our way back home, to realize that we were there all along. Maybe there isn't a home. Maybe there's just the isness. And within that isness, we can find ourselves. We can find each other. Wherever you are on planet Earth, go out and love your sisters and brothers fiercely, 
and ferociously. Hug them tightly and never, ever, ever be the first to let go. That's the golden rule of hugging. You know that. It's a beautiful, beautiful medicine. Remember to check out our website, starmagichealing.org. We got some of the best ascension tools on planet Earth. Hundreds of guided meditations, light language transmissions, cosmic yoga videos, high frequency nutrition, mystery school teachings on bundles of different subjects and topics. Every week we meet online for a frequency spa on Monday, a weekly meditation on Wednesday, and every second Sunday we meet for fearless focus. There's private telegram groups so you can connect with beautiful souls just like you on this same ascension mission. So connect. Go and get free access right now for seven days and I'll see you on the inside. Speak your truth, live your truth. Make up your own rules of this human game. Laugh, have fun, dance, be a little bit crazy and don't give a flying you know what. We're all sisters and brothers, beautiful soul. Let's act like it. <laughs> I'll see you again real soon. One love, one heart, one human family. Peace out, beautiful soul.